The hyperbola is usually the easiest topic in functions. Most students actually prefer studying with the hyperbola because they, will, they know they will get total in the hyperbola. However, when the question comes out in this form and they are to write it in this form, then it just kicks them out. But there are two methods to write this. So they can give you uh, an equation like this. They can give you uh, an equation where they said f at x is equal to x plus 3 over x plus 2. And they said write the equation of f in the form of f at x is equal to a over x minus p plus q. So what do you do? There are two methods to solve this. The first one is long division. However, I'm going to use an easier method than long division, which is the second method. So we want to convert it from this form into this form, the normal form of the hyperbola that we know. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we have to come up with the two at the top, right? So what we have to do is we're going to say x plus 2. So this is going to be all over x plus 2. So notice what I'm doing there. I added the 2, so I added the 2. But the problem is if I add this 2, I'm changing the number. I'm changing the whole thing. Because we cannot just look at a number and just add 2. For instance, let's just say they gave us 4 and we decide to add 2 and we made it 6. We have changed the number. So we don't want to change the number, but we want to change how it looks like. So what I'm going to do is, since I added 2, I'm going to remove the 2 at the same time. Then this plus 3. So notice, everything here is the same as at the beginning. I just added 2 and removed 2 at the same time so that it's the same as though I added 0. So therefore, I have not changed the number, but I've only changed how it looks like. So why do we add 2? When I come up with something that is the same as the denominator, for instance, if there was minus 3 at the bottom, we will, we will put minus 3 and we will add plus 3 as well. Or if there was x plus 7 at the bottom, we will add 7, then remove 7 at the same time. So when we do this, then we're going to split it. Notice that whenever fractions have got the same denominator, if we're adding them, we just have to write the denominator as 1, and we just have to add the top part only. So meaning that you can move from this step to this step, or you can move backwards. So in other words, if you're given something like this, a plus b over c, you can actually split it into a over b, Okay, rather A over C plus B over C. So you can split it into A over uh, C plus B over C. So you can move backwards. So it's just like moving from this step to this step. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're taking this as though it's one number and this as though it's one number. So we're going to split it. We're going to say X plus 2 over X plus 2 plus minus 2 plus 3 over x plus 2. Notice this before we're sharing the same denominator. I just separated them. Remember, whenever we've got a plus b over c, we are allowed to change it into a over c plus b over c. Or if we have something like 7 plus 3 over 8, we are allowed to make it 7 over 8 plus 3 over 8. So let's proceed. The same thing over the same thing is always 1. So it's going to be 1. Then minus 2 plus 3 is positive 1. So therefore we're going to have 1 over x plus 2. Notice the form is already coming out. We just have to rearrange this stuff. So we just have to rearrange this. So let's proceed. x plus 2 over x plus 2. The same thing over the same thing is always 1. And minus 2 plus 3 is positive 1. So therefore we're going to have positive 1 over x plus 2. And notice now we are having the same form already appearing. So all we have to do is just to rearrange this stuff. So when we rearrange this stuff, it's going to be 1 over x plus 2 plus 1. We just rearrange this stuff. So when you rearrange something, we take it together with the sign. If this was a negative 1, we were going to take the negative 1 together with it. And it was going to be negative 1. And there we have it. We have now written it in this form. So therefore, x plus f at x is equals to 1 over x plus 2 plus 1. Just before I continue, if you want to be treated whether it is online or physically, whether it is the situation where you are struggling in maths or whether it is the situation where you are good in maths but want perfection, take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEB, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you're doing no matter which country you're at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week. We also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvements. Notice the equation of the asymptote. 
the equation of the vertical asymptote can easily be seen even from the first form that we were given. We can tell the equation of the vertical asymptote because the denominator is not allowed to be zero, so meaning that x is not allowed to be negative 2 because if you have negative 2, the denominator will be zero. So if they ask you the equation for the asymptote from this, you don't need necessarily to convert it to this form for you to be able to find out. Just from this form, you can see the equation of the vertical asymptote. However, you cannot see the equation of the horizontal asymptote yet. So we have to convert it to this form, and then we'll be able to see it. But usually, whenever they give you this question, most of the time, the equation of the horizontal asymptote is most likely to be y is equal to 1. All right, here is another example. So let's say you are given something like this. So if you are given something like this, what you're going to do is... We want to come up with a negative 5 there at the top so that it can look the same as the bottom. So we're going to say x minus 5. But we can't just add minus 5. So since I added minus 5, I have to add the opposite so that it's the same as though I added 0. Then this is going to be plus 2 over x minus 5. And then from there, we're going to have to now split it. We'll take this as 1 and this as 1. So therefore, this is going to be x minus 5 over x minus 5. And then we're going to have plus 5 plus 2 over x minus 5. And then so far, this the same thing over the same thing is 1. And 5 plus 2 is 7. So we're going to have 7 over x minus 5. So 7 over x minus 5. So then we have, we have it in that form. We can just rearrange it. So if you rearrange it, it's going to be 7 over x minus 5 plus 1. And then we have it. So we have it in that form. So therefore, f at x is equal to 7 over x minus 5 plus 1. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. And if any of the contacts are provided in the advert is not working, please comment.